now that we've talked, like just as a recap, it feels like it was that sharing of the struggles that really made it easy for us to connect uh, with others. And it, it was like this level of, mm, like it, I, I described it as like vulnerability, like, you know, people are connecting through vulnerability. Um, and when you're not willing to be vulnerable, it's actually very hard to connect with other people and people don't learn like with people that they don't like. And so <laughs> this, this notion that you, they've got to like you, you know, they, they kind of have to connect with you before they're really going to start learning from you. And it, it does seem like, how do I do this? Like, I'm so overwhelmed. You know, there's so many things going on. Um, and especially with our world of tech, which, which kind of leads into the, the next question, like, you know, we see tech as this massive distraction, um, but that's not always the case. Like sometimes we can use tech in order to connect with other people. We can use tech in order to grow our connection with others. And I think that, you know, that might be a good way of uh, segueing into the, the next uh, portion is uh, like, Rochelle, like, what would you suggest? Are there any suggestions for using like tech to get into their interests and get to like, maybe know them a little bit better? Um, what would you have to say in that area? Yeah, it's it, when I think about, gosh, again, going back to the beginning of my teaching career, and then moving forward a little bit, the first days of school, for example, I was always diving into here's the rules, here's what to expect, all right, let's get started. And then I got away from that and started to do some icebreakers and getting to know students. And uh, and I know very well, just because I spent so many years as a student, whenever you do things like, say, icebreakers, or even in as adults, as professional development, you go to a conference or something like that. I, I just find it so interesting how nervous I would get in speaking in front of my peers. And that was not something that I even considered with my students because they would ask, can we just do this presentation just with you or in our seats and nobody else pays attention? And I said, but you're speaking in front of your classmates. And that was kind of a wake up call to me to realize like, one, I need to put myself out there more and share my story, who I am, connect with other educators, but I needed to set up ways for students to build relationships with their classmates and also for me to get to know them. But that didn't necessarily mean that it would happen overnight or in person one-on-one -on -one conversations because people are shy. People aren't necessarily comfortable speaking, sharing with their teachers or with other classmates. And so one of the things that I really value about all of the different options we have out there for looking at digital technology or digital tools and ed tech is that especially in this past year where so many schools started not in person and you're trying to figure out how do we get to form this kind of community with our students, with them, with each other, with our students and their families and us together. And so leveraging some of these tools. And so just even having a quick space, like I have had students who in the past we would use before Flipgrid, we were using something called recap, which is now it's from swivel. And so they have synth, but I had students who really did not want to share anything about themselves in class, in person, but they had no problem recording a video. And then if I played the video in class in front of their classmates, which was basically an about me, kind of an introduction. And I said, but your, your video is there playing. And they said, yeah, but I was able to do it at home where I was comfortable, nobody around. If I made mistakes, I could record it again. And then once I knew that I was comfortable with the final product, it didn't matter who you showed it to because I was confident and I felt good about what I had presented in that. And so creating those spaces, like using some of the tools where, and maybe it's not speaking, it might just be having the conversation, messaging. Uh, I mean, it doesn't always have to be like the video because some people don't like to be on camera, as we know, right? <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many ceiling fans I was teaching in class this year just because that's <laughs> ceiling fans and window blinds because they didn't want to show their face. So. It's nice that we have so many different tools that are out there that enable us to communicate and collaborate regardless of where we actually are and in a way that meets our specific interests, needs, and comfort levels too. I love that, Rochelle, because I, I do feel that something like recording a video of yourself um, and being able to delete it and just go like, you know what, I want to try again. I, I want to give myself more opportunities is a great way of getting comfortable. And I feel like more and more because there is so much stuff out there. Like if you, if you're not in front, like if you're not comfortable in front of a camera, there's a lot of things that are a lot harder for you. 
uh, doing job interviews becomes really awkward. You know, having meetings with other people, um, even like uh, doing like a business transaction of any sort. Like these are all things that if you can feel more comfortable or if you can train yourself to feel more comfortable, it, this will help you in the long term. Not just about you being becoming a celebrity or anything. It's about like just the basic communication. This is how we talk to each other. And as much as possible, like we're just trying to have like as close to a face to face. Right. You're going to have to talk to people face to face eventually. And you can't hide behind the webcam that's pointing to the ceiling <laughs> all the time. So I, I love that. Um, so you're, you're right on the, you're, like you're right on the money here. And I, I love how you're explaining that. And so you're saying that for some people, it's like, it's they're shy, right? Like, or they, 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 they feel about themselves. And I, I'm kind of going back to the previous question, like, okay. You know, sometimes people have these anxieties in the same way that they have anxieties of sharing their stories. Mm, like, what what is it that gets people, uh, what have you found that kind of gets people maybe out of their shell or gets people more comfortable with going, yeah, okay, I'm okay with sharing with other people at this time? Yeah, sometimes it just, it has been where they've been able to kind of work with a partner, for example. And have somebody there that's with them and they have a conversation or they work on something together and then that, that becomes something that they share and just slowly building that comfort. Um, also, just asking students, I'll use a form or a survey or something at the beginning of the year and ask them what their preferences are and offer some different options and choices for them and just to get to know them and to help them to kind of build up that confidence, especially in teaching Spanish students need to feel comfortable speaking in front of their classmates. And so I want to kind of structure as much as I can, having them build up their skills like, okay, fine, we're going to write. Okay, you don't have to have the camera on. Okay, let's try just the audio, for example, and then build up progressively over time until they really are comfortable. Oh, okay. So you're talking about like providing um, multiple ways or multiple opportunities um, right. to practice like a new language for example. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it, it has worked in my classroom and I've seen the students build their confidence and become more comfortable, which even though like, let's say they're using a video that they're recording at home and then being played in the classroom, I've seen them become more comfortable in the classroom because they had that kind of comfort level already built in because they knew that the video was good to go for them. And so when their voice and their video were being shown, and then the conversations that followed after that, they started to build those relationships and feel more comfortable in the classroom. And so it definitely has made a difference. Oh, okay. So that's different. So you were saying like, it's, it's the, like in a video game, like there's that level one and getting past level one, like just saying like, Hey, I've got a video pre-recorded of me that I'm going to share with everyone. That's a way of getting people connected and, and getting them comfortable to say like, okay, then I want to do a follow-up. I have a question. You're more willing to answer that in front of the whole class, for example. Right. Right. And that, and that has worked. Hmm. Um, that kind of relates to um, Marianne's uh, request. She's uh, asking is she dreaded having to do a book report in front of um, her classmates. So uh, I wondered whether or not, you know, it's in the same way, like this, this awkwardness of being in front of the, the whole class. Um, and I remember talking about this too, when it came to tech, it was, it was always about the simple things that you could do. Um, and if it was like a large touchscreen, I remember like a simple task of like, you, you drag an object from outside the classroom to inside the classroom, just that simple like drag and drop made it so that you feel more comfortable being in front of the class and using something like an interactive touchscreen. Just because people are so, like they're so hesitant when it comes to technology and if their first try is going to be a negative one, um, they're not even going to, to try it. And so right. you kind of have to get over like step number one, level number one, they haven't, they haven't got past it. Yeah. And I remember when I brought, I, I had gotten a smart board in my classroom, my students were a little bit nervous about going out and using it at first, just because it meant they had to get out of their seat and walk to the front of the room. And I know that in the same situation in a professional development session, I didn't want to go up and use the, the smart board in front of my peers in that meeting. And that's, again, when I realized that I needed to set up some things in my classroom to help students become more confident, but I also need to put myself out there and do the exact same thing as well. 